Hello, welcome to the Monday, November 22nd, 2021 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. And just as a reminder, it's the Thanksgiving week here in the United States. So this week, we will only have three podcasts for Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. Two quick diaries this weekend from our Internet Storm Center handlers. Uh, Guy wrote about some attacks he's seeing in his honeypots targeting Hikvision security cameras. The vulnerability being exploited here is reasonably recent. CVE 2021-36-26-0. So hope you got your cameras patched. There are a total of 3.2 million of these cameras connected to the internet, according to Shodan. And a couple of weeks ago, we had a diary by Xavier uh, talking about how the pluggable authentication modules or PAM in Linux can be abused, in particular, how backdoors can be introduced into uh, these uh, modules. Well, uh, DDA now has a little uh, bash script that looks for some specific backdoors and will detect them if they got introduced into PAM. So something you want to keep in mind for your instant response toolkit. In a collaboration among research uh, institutions from China as well as from the US has taken a closer look at the root certificates that are being used uh, to sign web certificates that are being used for TLS in the public internet. What they noticed is, and shouldn't really be a big surprise that there are a lot of certificates that are verified or signed by certificate authorities that are not publicly known and trusted. Overall, this it's not necessarily a bad thing because a lot of organizations have their own private CAs for internal use. And yes, some of those websites may be exposed, but if they're really only meant to be used by internal users who trust a specific server authority, then it's not necessarily a bad thing. But it becomes a little bit more tricky is that apparently many of these certificate authorities are attempting to impersonate some well-known certificate authorities. When you set up a certificate authority, you can give it a name for an internal certificate authority. You typically use something related to your company name or the like. You also have things like, for example, Palo Alto, Firewalls and such will use their own set of authorities and name them Palo Alto or something along those lines. Well, uh, what you shouldn't do is, and that's where it likely gets more malicious, if you, for example, use a well-known set of authorities name like uh, Komodo or such, that of course could easily be confused by a user for a valid certificate. And as a result, a user may be tricked into accepting that certificate or an analyst seeing, for example, this kind of certificate authority in a log from Seek or something like this uh, may trust implicitly that certificate authority because of the name appears to be familiar. In the end, you still need to accept those bad set of authorities. This is a little bit more difficult if you are using strict transport security for your domains and include subdomains. That way, you usually have to jump through a couple more hoops in order to accept that set of authority. And the blog post by NetSpy has details regarding a vulnerability in Azure Active Directory that uh, leaked app registration certificates in certain circumstances. The problem here was that if a user was able to have an automation account with run as credentials, those credentials were stored in clear text and could be accessible to other users who then may be able to escalate their privileges to contributor for the particular app. Microsoft has implemented changes to Azure in order to fix this problem. Again, an attacker would need some valid credential in order to exploit this vulnerability. In addition, uh, you may want to double check and maybe renew some of these credentials if you feel necessary. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.